Hello everyone, this is Wendy DeRosa. This video is on the question, how do I heal from anxiety and depression? So please first know that I am not a clinical therapist and so I'll be addressing this issue from a energy healing and spiritual perspective, yet many of you may already know this. If you've been watching my videos, I have a very grounded approach. Now, I wanna say, first of all, if you are in crises in any way, please have your support system, a therapist, a doctor, 911, whatever you need for immediate support um, available to you. And I'm gonna talk more about the, um, the energetics of what's happening in the body as it relates to anxiety and depression and how to work with it. So first of all, know that uh, know this, is that there are, there are many reasons why anxiety and depression happen in the body, and this is a perspective. It's not the perspective or the answer, it's an answer. So, no, so here's what I would like to explain, which is that a lot of times anxiety and depression often on an energetic level relate to the heart chakra. Anxiety can be symptomatic in the heart, heart racing, 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 palpitations, constriction of breath. It can be, you know, it can be a lot of pounding in the heart and we feel it in that area of the body. It can also be in the stomach and the gut and it can be in the head too if people are having things like, you know, symptomatic migraines or headaches or dizziness, light, lightheaded, light of, light of breath, light, lightheadedness. Um, and on depression level, it can leave us feeling helpless. It can leave us feeling, you know, like sorrow, deep sorrow, loneliness, loss, disconnection, um, you know, and just a, 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 an incapacitated state. Oftentimes, these relate these these uh, symptoms relate to what happens in the heart chakra. But know this is that the heart area of the body is responsive to what's going on lower in the body. So the heart is a reactionary power center. There's messaging coming from other areas of the body. And the heart center is where our soul communes with our clear higher consciousness, with our, our present day consciousness. So we'll get the signals we'll get the body sensations, if that's our intuition talking, we'll get information perhaps, fears that will trigger from the heart chakra, but it's not always related to the heart chakra. It's the heart chakra signaling us. Where in an energetic level, a lot of the issues actually stem from that can contribute to anxiety is actually lower in the body. The first three power centers of the body are where we house a lot of our history, our human history, our past, our past traumas, our past conditioning, what we learned and how to exist in the world. It's how we've learned how to survive. And it's also, it relates to how we relate to others and our social constructs in the world. And what can happen on a soul level, this is a perspective, is that when we are evolving and growing, our soul evolves up the chakra system. And so if we have been through a life experience where it was too difficult to stay in the body and stay grounded in the body, or we had to create a, we had to create a coping mechanism such as disconnection, numbness, fight or flight, or some type of coping mechanism that didn't allow us to repair and recover into the state of belonging and grounding in the body then we can perpetually stay in a state of ungroundedness. Meaning what happens is the soul starts to lift up in the body. And when the soul lifts up in the body, the root chakra area of the body has contracted. And it's contracted because something in the environment says it's not safe to be here, to belong here, or to exist in the, plant, uh, in the body. And so now... The root chakra is contracted, the soul lifts up in the body. And when the soul lifts up, we can exist just fine like that for a while. And then symptoms will start to ensue.
Sometimes those symptoms are the racing in the heart. Sometimes those symptoms are spaciness or indigestion, digestionist issues. Sometimes those symptoms are more circumstantial in the world, such as the rug keeps getting pulled out from under me. I keep attracting the wrong kinds of people into my life. I'm manifesting the same you know, difficult situation over and over again. Gosh, I have really terrible habits around whatever it is. Is, you know, not taking care of myself or whatever it is, food or drugs or sex or whatever it might be, the spirit has lifted up in order to not be connected in the lower half of the body. And it's too much energy for the heart chakra to manage on its own. And it starts to signal us. It signals us through acceleration of the heart chakra, which can create that anxiety feeling in the heart. And the, the, the um, healing around that is how do I start to get grounded into myself? Now, we can do that in a moment. We can create, you know, and practice. I do lots of grounding practices because I'm a big advocate of grounding. Grounding into our root chakra, grounding into the lower half of the body, and, you know, using the grounding cord walking on the earth barefoot. You know, we can certainly start to um, practice grounding, but sometimes that's not enough. The ground, if we start the process of grounding, but our body's been in a contraction pattern in the root chakra for so long because there's unhealed stuff there, the next step is healing, is starting to heal what's held in the lower half of the body. Now, in the therapeutic process, whether we realize that or not, you're doing it. You're looking at the, the history. You're looking at what's, um, you know, what the story is that you're unraveling and unpacking around childhood that might have created coping mechanisms and, you know, existence and the, the ways things have existed or turned out in life and why trauma keeps getting re-traumatized, et cetera, et cetera. Start working that stuff out. But the body connection is that energy is held lower in the body. That's where we take the story and the awareness and start bringing it to a body, uh, the, bringing it to the body, which is that the energy of our survival and our, our personal wounds and what we're holding is actually imprinting in the first three chakras of the body, basically from the diaphragm down. So this is anxiety. Depression is similar in the energy system and a similar process. You still would be working with depression from the awareness that there could be in a contraction in the root chakra and healing is the next step here. It just can look different in the body in that depression sometimes means that there's too much of the heart energy has sunk to the backside of the heart without the backside of the heart being open to grace. And sometimes depression in, in the, the energy system means that there is a self, there is an aspect of self that is not being seen, met, or connected with. And there's a, there's a, a strong neglect going on, but it, it's not necessarily, it can be from childhood neglect of emotions or neglect of of you know the, the child, certainly that can be, but on deeper, on a spiritual level, it means that the soul is not connected to consciousness within. It's that the, the, but the human person is not necessarily connected to the consciousness of their soul. I'll say it that way. They may know there's more, they may know there's another way, and that's that's the drive to keep going. But what happens here is that when the energy starts to sink to the backside of the heart chakra, there is a doorway that opens. And some people might have been through depression before an awakening. And the awakening is that the backside of the heart chakra starts to open up to grace, open up to God, open up to divine love, whatever the word is. We have lots of different terms for the spiritual light, the spiritual life, you know, the experience of grace coming into the body and, and awakening the true self. What's been possible in my experience for people who have 
have suffered from depression and anxiety, sometimes they come together, is that, it is that when they start to allow more divinity, more divine love, more prayer, more connection to higher love into the backside of the heart, and there is an awakening to self that the depression dissolves. It, it can heal. It can, it can go away. And, and certainly, we're going to have sadness about things that happen in life that may be tragic. And certainly, we're going to have tears for you know, loss or, you know, loved ones who might have a shift or change or something in our lives. That's human. That's the sign of a healthy heart to have those, have a spectrum of emotions and compassion. What I'm speaking about is this opening to grace in the backside of the heart chakra. And it's not, it's not a horizontal inflow of grace. It's truly that grace starts to flow vertically down through the upper, upper pathway of the body in it's in the front and the back but we're so typically in the front that we have to emphasize the back and when we feel into the back side of the heart and we take that grace in and we pray there and we meditate there and we allow our you know allow our intuition to be felt there and we're taking that love in and we're letting ourselves be sourced and filled up, it starts to fill into the heart where there has been deprivation of that level of love. You know, sometimes with depression, we're so far in the back that the sadness is that we're not getting connection through the front side of the heart, but, and we're not engaged in the world through the front side of the heart, especially when depression is so intense. But that is, that is an indication that grace in through the backside of the heart to fuel the heart can invite the soul to step more forward into the body and engage from a place of divine connection, from self, from true self, from self-love, not just, you know, because you have to or because, you know, it's expected that you do. Now, what's interesting is this exercise of connecting into the backside of the heart chakra and receiving grace also opens up the backside of the heart in a way where those who might be struggling with anxiety can call their energy back in. And ultimately what it does is it balances the power and the prana between the backside of the heart and the front side of the heart, creating an open heart. Open heart is not just front of the heart. That's sometimes not good to have too open in the front. We want open in the front and open in the back, but opening in the back and receiving grace in through the back, again, not too open, just, just right for your body. As you receive that light in, it creates an, a balanced heart between the front and the back and allowing the center to be the powerful place of spiritual opening and consciousness. So on the other side of anxiety and depression is spiritual awakening. And I hope that this video supported you with some context around that. And I send you prayers and light and blessings to you for your experience and also for the connection to your heart and your light and your soul that's available to you. Many blessings. And again, I'm Wendy DeRosa, and you can learn more about me and the offerings I have at schoolofintuitivestudies.com. Thank you.